Hey guys, welcome to another video. So today I'm going to be doing Kiana, and I know this is a much requested one, so I hope you guys enjoy it. First of all, we'll quickly dive straight into the runes. Uh, electrocute, pretty obvious. Sudden impact for the extra damage when you're going for a dash. I really like Ghost Power. I think it's just a lot more... I think it's a lot more versatile and, and a really solid rune rather than Eyeball Collection. I feel like Eyeball Collection doesn't really help you that much. That's just my personal preference. And Ravenous Hunter, I personally like for the, because I feel like it's a more reliable rune rather than Relentless Hunter because you're already so fast with Moby Boots and, you know, roaming everywhere. So, I do, like, either all is fine, but that's just my per personal preference. Either Relentless Hunter or Ravenous Hunter is fine. Secondary Corrupting Pot, you want to go, I'm um, sorry, Biscuits and Time Warp Tonic for that extra sustain and lane, which will help you stay healthy when going for those roams or going for those all-ins. And then, in terms of itemization, basically, um, I'll quickly go over like the basic itemization, but I'll go into this more throughout the video. You want to be starting Corrupting Pot, trying to get your Mobies as fast as possible into a first item, Umbral Blade, which I've tested a lot. I think it's really, really strong because you're so roam heavy and clearing those wards can be tend to be really, really helpful. Next, you want to go into a second lethality item, either Ghost Blade or Dust Blade, whatever you feel like you prefer. I personally prefer Dust Blade for that extra damage with the passive on it, but also it just has a little bit more extra da attack damage and lethality than the Ghost Blade. And I think that really helps Kiana. And then thirdly, this is the kind of adaptive part of the build. This is where you need to assess what do you need. Do you need MR? Do you need to go Hex Trinket? Do you need to be a little bit more tanky? you need to go maybe Sterax or the, the lethality item that gives you the Banshee's Veil? <clears throat> Any of these items, um, it very much depends on the game. You might need extra armor penetration. So you might need to go from armor pen in your build. You may need to go... Uh, it, it just really, really depends. So I'll kind of explain that throughout the game and how you can identify what to build. But the main part of the build is those first le two lethality items, and that's going to start rounding out um, and really giving you a really solid form of identity heading into the game. So I chose this VOD, guys, because it, it was actually... I feel like it really encompasses a classic Kiana game. I was versing a Diana, which people find this matchup quite difficult. And funny thing is, in this game specifically, uh, Diana ended up getting first blood randomly to an invade. So she actually ends up starting with a Corrupting Pot and a Doran's Ring. So that was actually quite troublesome for me, this game. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of step you through uh, principles or rules that you guys can follow in your own game so you understand how to, to play Kiana in every single matchup despite um, the game state. So, first of all, guys... The very first objective when heading into laning phase is you want to get to level 3 with taking as little damage as possible and getting the most CS as possible. So this will very much vary depending on the champion you're versing. If I'm versing, say, a Syndra, it's going to be a, I'm going to get a lot less CS and probably take a little bit more damage than when I'm versing maybe, you know, Diana because she's obviously a melee champion. She's not going to be able to damage me and poke me in as much. So think of levels 1 to 3 as like a mini game within itself. And I don't hear many like people on YouTube talk about this, but levels 1 to 3 is super, super important. If you take... The, one of the huge mistake I see with Kiana players is they take way too much damage pre-level 3 and then when the wave is crashing off their tower, they don't have enough health to all in or look for a gank setup or anything. So right here, I'm already kind of messed up. Um, I've taken a cue to the face. So my mindset already in the laning, in the laning early laning phase is it doesn't matter what the matchup is. I'm playing this mini game with myself. I want to be pushed in ideally. Um, and the reason is, is I like I don't know why Diana's kind of letting me push, but ideally. It will be coming in here. I'll catch this wave when I'm like level two. And then as the wave's kind of coming out and building out here, I'll be getting level three. And then I want to either be looking for an all-in, looking for a gank setup with my jungler, or I just want to be pushing in, resetting myself, or going for a roam, helping with scuttles, etc. So that's what I was kind of confused in this specific landing phase. But I knew he had Doran's Ring and a Corrupting Pot, so I knew I can't even contest him even at level two. I just don't even be him. So this is like a lot of, and the reason again it's a mini game getting to level two, level three, sorry, so quickly is because your level one and two is so weak. So again, I want guys in your own games, I want you to think of this as a mini game. Use, you need to, and this is something you will perfect over time, is how to get as much CS as possible, how to take as little damage as possible and get to level three. So a few things here I just want to quickly give you guys with Kiana tips. So in terms of like what, what um, element to pick. 
I really like going Earth or the Earth form um, when it's it's a lot easier to CS and last hit with the Earth form, like in terms of using it, because obviously you have that extra damage when targets are below forty percent HP or something like that. So that's something to keep in mind when just CSing. I like to have it. If you're looking to have, create gank setup, just holding the water form or the ice form can be really threatening on the enemy laner, so they have to respect. But the safest and something you'll see me do in a lot of Kiana lanes is just take grass form and just farm with grass form. And grass form can allow you to just farm a little bit safer because they can't target you, they can't auto attack you. So a lot of the time you'll see me use grass form. So I, I don't know why Dino was kind of letting me do this, which is, I was kind of, all right, whatever, if you want to do this. And then he ends up starting to push. So you notice how I'm farming with grass form here. I really don't like this in terms of playing Kiana like this. So I'm like, well, if, if you want to kind of keep it in this position, what I'm actually, and what I should have done is started to stand more over here with the minions. And this is a tip for any Kiana game, guys. If you want to get pushed in and they're not really giving you push, just stand behind the minions Wait for their ability, and if they want to hit you, they also have to hit the minions as well. So it's just a quick little tip there to force them to push. But and anyway, he ends up pushing here, regardless. Um, which I'm like, okay. But I, the great thing is here, guys, is that I've got to my level three. I've got decent CS, and I've, I haven't used a single corrupting pot. I don't know why. I think I actually miss my, miss micro here. Um, I was actually meant to grass Q and then jump away with my W, but my Q didn't go off there, so I just like W'd and Q'd backwards, which is which is a little bit weird. But now, luckily, it's pushing into me. I'm just gonna be able to farm this under my tower. It's not a big deal. And notice how I'm constantly taking grass Q because again, I'm versing a Diana. It's gonna be difficult for her to auto attack me, and it just helps me farm a lot safer. And now Kiana was looking to gank. And what do you do when someone wants to gank? You want to go for water form to root them. And here, um, I get the, the water form to slow him a little bit and get the root off. But again, nothing's really going to happen. And I don't want this to happen. And a lot of the time, guys, what I should have done here is actually ping the jungler because there's not much kill threat. We can't kill this guy. He's super strong early, especially since he's got an extra Doran's ring on top of that. And I'm super weak. And I've had to use two corrupting pots now. So what's the second objective, Curtis? So guys... First objective, like we covered, get to level three with getting as much CS, taking as little damage as possible. Next, what I want to do is I want to get to 900 gold and get to Moby Boots. So my jungler's get, kind of getting shit on here. Um, so the game's obviously not in the best spot right now. So here, just CSing under tower. Nothing too special. I want to get to 900 gold for Moby Boots. That's my second objective, guys. And the reason that's so important is because once you get Moby Boots, Moby Boots, you can just like ditch your wave and go from so many roams and it just unlocks your, your champion and it'll make a lot more sense when I play when when I as we go through this video here guys. So that's the second objective. So I saw like my laner lean onto bot side. Maybe it was like trying to do something bot. So instead of like trying to follow or anything, I'm like, no, I want to achieve my second objective. And this is any champion. Um you know, it doesn't matter what champion, you really want to get to Moby Boots, which is 900 gold here. I'm very fortunate in this position that um, Diana uh, base gave me a recall, and now I'm actually uh, able to base on 900 gold and get my Moby Boots. And guys, don't force it too hard. If you can't survive in lane long enough, your early lane, say you're versus a really, like a, maybe like a Syndra or a Cassio, and they're really bullying you early, don't stress too much. Base whenever you can, ideally base when a cannon wave, the next wave is a cannon wave, which gives you a little bit more time. Come back, maybe you can just get a boots and a longsword. Maybe you get boots and a longsword, maybe you just get a longsword and a pink. Either of these are fine, but ideally, if you play it really well, dodge a lot of skill shots, um, you can get to your mobies quite consistently. So next, um, see how I use my one little tip here, when you're taking Time Warp Tonic, you always should use your crafting pot in base here because it will help you regen your resources quicker. And I use my crafting pot in base to help me regen my resources quicker. So now I'm just pinging the enemy. And notice guys, a really absolutely crucial tip here for when you're playing Kiana. When you're coming out of base, see how I'm always panning my camera and using pings to com communicate with my team. Because Kiana and you've got Moby Boots, you need to like a skill that you'll develop naturally is being able to assess the map. And sometimes you don't need to go straight to lane. Maybe you can detour, help someone in the jungle, go for a counter gank somewhere. Because Kiana is so mobile, like she can jump over walls and things like that. You can get to so many skirmishes um, that you're like, you're not even, you know, people wouldn't expect. So guys, that's a really big tip. Make sure you're always looking at lanes when you're coming out of base here. And notice again, 
Um, I don't, I can't really interact with this person in lane. I'm trying to just farm as much as I can with just Q from a distance, using my grass Q when possible. I'm just going to accept reality that I'm getting pushed in. And so an analogy before we go on any further, and I know I'm going very deep here, but I think this is really important because this is going to give you the, the mindset and the fundamentals so you guys can apply to every Kiana game. View, the, the analogy I'm going to use guys is imagine like you're a lion in like the savannah in Africa. Right, and again, just bear with me here. So, so you have a very, like the, the champion, Kiana's champion kit is designed to be very burst oriented. You got a, you have a, and like a lion in the savannah, you have a, a quick burst of energy, which is really, really powerful. And if you, and, and lions, when, they, when they're hunting, they are very calculated on their target and they prowl and they, they calculate. They don't just always go in all the time. They're not just go, they conserve their energy and then they go in and hit. So with Kiana, you want to be very calculated on your target. You want to make sure you're not really wasting any abilities for no reason. You want to be staying healthy, conserving your energy. So when the right moment hits, the right target's out of position, then you can capitalize and that's going to allow you to snowball. So try and create that mindset here. And notice how here, I'm not just sitting in the middle of the lane in between waves. I'm constantly hovering in river just in case something happens, which is another really good habit to get into when playing Kiana as well. And a lot of the time, since Kiana doesn't win many matchups 1v1, you're either going to be one or two things is going to be happening. You're going to be catching waves and roaming in between, or you're going to be just contesting the wave 1v1 He's when you're both not interacting and you're just going to be um, roaming. Or, yeah, or you're just going to be setting up ganks using your water form, and he's going to try and poke you. And then once you hit six, you can just full combo him when your jungle's nearby and look for a kill. But since Dinah's quite hard, diffi like difficult to kill, and I think that I felt like this game, I really wanted to play away from Dinah, and I really just wanted to play for roams. So there I'm just pinging Dinah that she was going top and just catching this, this wave under tower here. And then I actually see... Dinah top here on that ward. So what does that mean? Already guys, we were lying in the savannah, which means that like I need to be calculated. Who's my next target? So I want to get this wave in as soon as possible. Use your the, the earth for the extra damage on low targets if possible. It doesn't matter if you miss CS. Use it should be using a crafting pot to stay healthy here. I'm using a biscuit at the moment. Get my water cute and you're constantly ro then roaming. I know I can't roam onto top side guys, and I've covered this in other videos, is because their jungler was top side, they just would lend top, I know there's all vision, and my jungler's bot side. And what do I do? I roam straight bot here, got my Moby boots, I'm coming from behind. And in between the ways, I'm able to get a nice little roam off here. So what you, what should you see from me? I should look to walk up EQ, so the, the Q never misses. But for some weird reason, like, I feel like I did E, but my E didn't go through or something. I, like, mechanic, I screwed up a lot of micro this game, so you have to bear with me. But here, ideally, I'm just going to walk in, E, Q, um, and then it's going to follow him regardless if he has flash or not. And if, if I need to, I can just push him against the wall to kill him or anything. And then we end up just destroying him. But I kind of misplayed through my Q for some reason, which is weird. As I'm kind of annoyed at myself for that. But yeah, this is a standard roam here, guys. And so notice how... Um, I knew when I was roaming, I'm like, they were overextended. Um, I didn't really miss, I mean, I've got my Mobies. I know I'm going to be able to be quick. Uh, Diana, Diana screwed up by giving me the push on the wave and then I capitalized. So next, I don't have ultimate guys. Next thing I'm already thinking about my kill threat. Like again, you're a lion. You've just, you've gone for a kill. You've used a lot of energy. I'm not going to be as powerful in my next attack because I, I won't have ultimate guys. So what does that mean? Yes, I should be looking at lanes as I'm coming out of base here. Um, and I'm picking that my lane is missing. But I should be just constantly thinking about kill threat. Because again, I am quite strong even without ultimate if someone's really overextended. But that's why I say I'm just constantly looking at side lanes. Looking at top, looking at bot, looking at top. And I'm waiting, trying to, get a, a, trying to figure out who's my next target. And, and, and I don't want to freeze. Ideally, I just want to be con con constantly pushing and moving. But guys, a huge mistake, again, I see a redirect again, that I see in, in, in lower elo, um, I, I see in just with poor, like myself, I used to make this mistake, is I tried to force too much when I didn't have ultimate. So I, I have to communicate with my team and try to communicate with my team to um, that I don't really want much to happen because I'm, I'm so weak without my ultimate. My burst is a lot weaker. 
And there's no way, again, I can contest this guy. He just has Conqueror. He can just bully me off the wave. So, again, I'm just going to have to accept reality. And this is the, the sad reality of a lot of these matchups when you're playing Kiana. Um, again, using Earth Form to, to farm makes it a little easier because you got that bonus damage. So that's pretty much my mindset at the moment. It's just catch waves, wait till my ultimate's back up, and then look for another roam. And, and now my jungler's basing. I should just be quite patient here. It's very important that you're patient because, again, I can't really do much at the moment. So here, if, and if the laner ever gives you an opportunity to shove, you should always take that. You never really want to be, f like, f in my opinion, like, again, you need to be really clear in your identity. Are you freezing and setting up a gank, or are you pushing and moving? As the game starts to get early to mid game, this is when you need to be really, really set on your identity. You can't afford to be half assed You're doing one of the other guys. And notice how in between waves, I'm constantly leaning to the side that I think has the most kill threat because Karma is so squishy. And now I am just constantly leaning onto the side in between waves. And now that I realize nothing's really happening, my Caitlyn um, just based, so I'm just going back mid here. Now I have my ultimate, so I know I have a lot of kill threat. Ideally, I actually want to start to like look to roam sides. But for some reason, um, I think Talia was just looking mid here. And I thought this was an actual kill, but you actually see what happens. I EQ, get the root. And then I thought that I might, I'm going to push him into the wall, might be able to get the stun. But if you actually see, if I pause it here, he thought he was going to get the, the shove as I do my ultimate. So what actually happens, we stack our abilities and I push him out of the shove and he's able to flash. He doesn't get into the wall and then he gets out, which was super, super unfortunate, which um, is really bad for Kiana because when you use your ultimate and you get nothing from it, I mean, I just got a flash. Um, it's really, really, it's really suboptimal. And again, I thought he was going to continue to look here. I knew this is a really bad gank. And notice how, look at this. I didn't have my ultimate and we couldn't burst him. So the play was over. We shouldn't have gone around two there. That was just a bad play. So guys, learn from my mistakes here. I mean, obviously, that, I think that should have been a kill if we missed, we played the micro properly. And like the setup was really good. The E into the water queue, into the root. But again, misplay. But the second time around, I didn't have ultimate. It was way too forced. The play's over. Um, you know, I'm a lion. I've used my 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 attempt. It didn't work. Wait for myself to regen and get to the next the next play. So now I see I'm just building towards my humble blade at the moment. And what do I do? Panning my camera. Look at how I'm panning my camera. I'm panning it top, panning a bot. I don't see anything bot, but I see top is a lot of kill threat, right? Because Malphite has ultimate. Quinn's super squishy. Diana's not going to be in lane for a little bit because he also um, had to base. And I have Mobis. So look at this. I don't just take the traditional route. I jump over this wall to see if I can avoid any wards. And then I see Kiana actually move into river here. So I actually go around this way and then see if I can sneak in here. I uh, use the blast cone and then I just flash over and I kill her. I probably didn't even need to ignite, but I just did it. It just feels instinct. But I see how that's a really clean roam using information out of base. And this is what you got to do when you, when you play Kiana. You can't afford to just play autopilot. You got to constantly use your brain because again you're not a strong laning champion and you've got to play to your strengths of your champion and that is pushing and moving or just roaming it in itself and, and abusing the fact that you can you're so mobile so that was a nice little roam and i did that without ultimate purely because i was able to assess the kill threat i assessed the kill setup that malphite had ultimate she was a very squishy target it was a very simple kill so now I've got ultimate coming up soon. So what I'm going to constantly do is just lean. Um, I don't need to be mid anymore. So I'm just going to lean into bot side. Looks like it's going to, something's going to be happening. So again, I'm constantly moving. I'm not. I'm never just hitting mid tower. I really refuse to hit mid tower as, uh, as kind of, um, Kiana. Here, he ends up dying. Switch my target. Push him against the wall. Get a right, nice little combo there. So I like to, a lot of these, these skirmishes, I like to start with the ice the water one, get the root off, get an auto attack, push him in, and then finish him off with the um, the earth cube because you obviously have the extra damage when the targets are low. Now I can base and get my humble blade. So this is where I'm going to start to get out of control right now. This is where Kiana starts to get out of control. Yes, I don't really win the 1v1, and that doesn't really matter, guys. Because Kiana has so much mobility, you can always do things. So if you can't really see the chat here, but I'm actually spamming flashes at the moment as well. I'm spamming the timers. I saw Diana flash, so I'm timing Diana flash. 
before I've got top flash because when I killed Di um, Quinn, she also flashed as well. So I'm timing flashes. Timing flashes on Kiana is really, really important as well because again, you want to know that that target can't flash away during your roams or maybe you know you're just going to go for a roam just to blow a flash. So now my ultimate's coming up in a minute. I was going to see if I can roam up and clean that kill, but I need to think about my kill threat. Obviously, it's a lot less purely because I don't have ultimate for another minute. So now, um, again, I kind of just... Notice how I'm not really trying to trade aggressively onto Dinah ever. I'm just... I'm playing really annoyingly in a way. Like, I'm playing for the wave. I'm not giving her any opportunities. I'm respecting her if she wants to contest. And if she gives me the wave, I'll take the wave. I'm not giving her opportunities because that's not my target. I know I can't kill 1v1. So it's all about identifying what... You know, what are your strengths? What are you playing for? And again, constantly roaming. And I know I can't go top because they're all dead. So I just roam bot side. And... Um, I know that um, here I was able to go on Ezreal and get a nice little kill, Q on the back end, get a nice little double kill here. So notice, guys, there's times where I've roamed, I've got nothing, and then there's times where I've roamed where I've got something. In solo queue, because the, no one's playing perfect and they don't, they're not on comms, sometimes they don't listen to pings, they may even have someone muted. A lot of the time, you're going to be able to get roams off, and, that, and, and again, it comes down to, this is a skill that you guys will uh, grow, is your ability to assess where to lean, where to put your vision. Notice how initially, if I quickly hover on the minimap here, I initially put my pink on top side because I thought that's where I was going to kind of um, roam the most because Malphite set up with his ultimate so strong. But because he died, I I pivoted my strategy and ended up leaning onto the bot side knowing that my jungle was bot side and um, they were dead top and they were overextended bottom. So it's a mini game in my head of... Like once you get into mid game, it's all about assessment, assessing kill threat, assessing where the vision is, assessing where I should lean. And this is a skill, guys. And if you refer to my other video about like how to improve in solo queue, this was a skill like side lane assessment that I, I, I honed over time. It wasn't just an overnight thing. And Kiana's the perfect champion if you really want to improve on that skill. So my ultimate's back up now, so I know I have a lot of kill threat. Um, so I'm going to be looking to roam soon into another kill. And here, um, bot was under tower, so I didn't believe top was a kill. Bot was a kill, so I'm just leaning top side at the moment. And, um, again, I don't want to lose too much CS here because Dinah kind of hit the wave and I wasn't sure if I could get a kill top, so I end up just catching one more wave. And, and, and the, the mini game in, in mid game, like, I know I'm referring to mini game a lot, is, is, okay... How much time do I have in between roams to go for a kill? Because if you go for a roam and you fully commit and you don't get a kill and you miss maybe a whole wave, the enemy mid laner attacks your plates, you're going to lose a lot. It's a high risk, high reward gameplay. So it's all about minimizing. How can you minimize that risk while heightening the reward, which is understanding the kill threat, guys. And this is how you kind of get really far ahead on Kiana. See, I'm leaning onto the top side, knowing that Malphite has really good gank setup. I've also set my pink up ward in the river here, so it's really easy for me knowing that there's no vision. And I got my Umble Blade, so it's super easy. And I walk up here. I'm waiting for him to actually ultimate first, but he doesn't. So I'm just going to EQ for the root, and then bang. Nice little simple kill there. And a lot of the time, guys, remember when I'm when you go for a roam onto a side lane, it's good to just, if especially if your mid lane is responding on the other side, just stay here and get the tower a lot of the time because... um. There's no point going back mid here. So notice how I'm just looking at bomb, just kind of assess. And the reason I'm doing this, guys, is I want to look at the skirmish to see if anyone is going is using flash. Because that's, like, when you're just observing a fight, <coughs> fight from, like, the third party, you can actually time all the flashes really well. Because when you're in it, it's really hard to know who flashed and who didn't. So now I'm just getting a nice little... Um, here was actually, oh, so what I was thinking here was, okay, Quinn's going to come back out of base here. I'm drawing on a minimap. So, I'm, and Malphite didn't use ultimate on the last gank. So here I can actually cheese Quinn again. And this is just a nice little cheesing. The only reason I'm doing this, guys, is because um, they died bot. Three of them died. Their jungler died, mid laner died, and support died. So I know no one's going to be here topside to respond to this. Generally, this play wouldn't work, be as reliable because their whole team's coming up. But because they're dead, I knew I kind of had time to go for this. And uh, maybe he's typing in chat here, but I'm able to get another little sneaky kill on this Quinn. Poor Quinn. And this is, yeah, the, playing to the strength of Keanu here. The only downside of this gameplay, guys, is that I'm not really getting mid tower. Ideally, this would allow my jungler to get rift tower into using rift and helping me get mid. But um, I didn't end up doing that this game. And, and again, Keanu really struggles with getting mid tower. You want to kind of break open side lanes anyway. So now the AD carry is looking to go mid now, which means I want to go on the side lane. 
fast forward this a little bit. I'm working towards my dust blade. Um, yeah, just dust blade at the moment, which again, I want to get my two core lethality items. Um, oh, so here I'm just, because I know I don't really need to, a fight was breaking out and I, I want to go to a side lane, but on the way through, I just thought that I could maybe get a nice little kill. There's not too much to that one. So now what I want to be doing is playing side lane and then moving from the side lane to hover mid. Um, because I want, I want my pressure to lead to an objective. I want to exert my pressure around the map so we can get objectives. Kills don't mean shit if you don't get objectives at the end of the day. So... Here, um, I know Diana's dead, so I'm able to kind of just shove out here on my own. Farm with uh, Earth Q, which makes it a lot easier. And notice how, again, um, I'm walking into these bushes as well to just see if there's any wards with my Umble Blade, which is really, really good in mid-game. And Ezreal's not respecting me here very well. And I'm able to go for a nice little kill. EQ into the wall, into a nice kill there. If yeah, I'll just go kind of slow down that combo again just to go over it. Um, and I had ice. I really like getting picking up ice when you're going for kills. Um, so I get the EQ um, into the push, into the auto, into the Q. So remember, one my like the only tip I'll give you there, guys, pretty self-explanatory is make sure you weave in auto attacks in between your combos as well, um, especially towards the end. So you, when you do use your Earth Q, um, you make sure that you get that added bonus damage with the low target so now this is ideally what i want to be doing is pushing out the side deep or killing someone in the side and then moving translating my pressure into the mid lane like this um and looking to hover just so they can get damage on mid tower because once this mid tower is broken it's going to open up the map a lot more for me here all right all right all right all right all right, so here, again, I'm seeing how I notice I'm just hovering. I don't really expect to do much because I don't have ultimate. But again, my presence is just... I want their, my presence to be known um, purely for the fact that, again, I want them to get damage on mid-tower. So I'm just constantly hovering around here. And there's no, there's no reason for me to go bot lane. So I just kind of want to scare them. I want them to know I'm here, which will generate and create space for my team to get damage onto this mid-tower. That's pretty much all I'm doing here, guys. Just fear factor, you know, like the show fear factor. That's all I'm doing. And now I, I, I ping everyone back, 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 because we need a reset. There's the, we're not a Sage composition. Yes, we have Caitlyn, but again, we have Malphite. We need to dive or we need to um, push out the sides before we do something. Otherwise, we're just going to get really far behind. So now I've got my two core lethality items, which is really, really strong. I'm pinging Dragon as the next objective. Malphite decides to go bot, so I'm just going to go top and catch the top wave. I think ideally I should be actually bot and Malphite should be top because he has teleport coming up very soon. But, you know, I need farm, so I'm, I'm just going to kind of compensate and kind of get this farm while I'm here. Which is quite annoying, and ideally you want to be controlling the lane assignments as you're coming out of base, but he just didn't listen to me. So he already just went bot, so there's nothing I could have done about it. And, a lo like, a lot of the time, um, what happens is... Because I, I ref uh, one huge mistake I see is people share CS in mid game, and that's how you get really far behind. I've been roaming a lot, and I still have around 140 CS, 18 minutes, which is not too bad. Um, and this is me because I've been I've been in the side lane, I've been pushing out sideways, I haven't just completely ditched farming, and this is how you kind of stay in the realm of um, farm being okay. So now I'm just kind of giving at the moment because my jungle is not nearby and I don't really want anything to happen. Ideal and, and ideally, guys, something you really want to be cognizant about in mid game is careful about when you use your ultimate. If I were to go and use my ultimate here, that I I must be conscious. Okay, I'm not going to have this ultimate for the dragon fight. So if I'm going to use my ultimate, I must be thinking if I get this kill, it's going to allow us to get dragon anyway. Because if I use my ultimate too early, they respawn, come to dragon. They know I don't have ultimate. It could actually change the the state of the fight. So that's something I'm thinking about here. Um, and unfortunately, like the way this pans out, um, I just I, I just don't, like I thought that I was able to get a quick kill and I thought that like it would be enough time. Um, I didn't even know what I was thinking. That was just a bad play. And and I want you guys to learn from my, my mistake there as well. Even if I got that kill, I don't even think it would change anything. Like I feel like if anything, it would give them an opportunity to to actually get dragon because I wouldn't have ultimate. And since Keon is so ultimate based, um, it's just not a good play, guys. So, learn from my mistake here. And they end up like camping the bush and doing a lane gank, um, which is well played to them, but they kind of lose a lot of, they lose a lot of farm and 
stuff on the other side of the map here. It is what it is. So, fast forwarding a bit, again, we're just going straight to Dragon. Uh, I don't need to help them because they used a lot of stuff. Um, they used a lot of stuff on us top. And here, I'm just going to go back to the side lane. I'm telling Malphite, go bot. Malphite was starting to head top here. And this is what you really need to do. Um, is control the lane assignments. If you don't control the lane assignments, guys, your champion's going to be a lot less effective because either you're going to be on the other side of the map where the action isn't, or someone's going to start a fight without you being there. My Malphite has teleport. Our next objective is Baron. So we should be playing towards the top side of the map here, um, not the bot side. If I'm bot, it's going to make things a whole lot harder. So notice how here, one or two things is going to happen. Guys, this is super important. So when you get into this state of the game, you know, it's 20 plus minutes, we'll be playing for Baron. Ideally, I'm going to draw on the minimap here, guys. If my team, my three in the middle, have control, they, they're able to push out mid, push them deep, and able to walk into river and get, like, a lot of vision control in this river. What this is going to mean is, naturally, I'm going to be able to shove out the top here. Because the enemy laner is going to be, oh shit, their team's going to back them up, so I have to respect. But if my team say losing or it's just even priority in mid, sometimes what I'll do is just I'll just come mid first, try and force priority with my presence or my threat, get a bit of vision, and then go back top, which will allow me to shove out. Um, but in this specific example, my Kate Braum is so far ahead. So instead of like grouping, what I do is I just like stay top here. And I'm waiting for my team to kind of back me up. And Quinn's ditching, which means Malphite's just shoving out bot right now. So we should just chill. Like, we should just chill because Malphite's shoving all the way out top. When Qu when Quinn backs off, then we're going to be able to, I'm able to get a shove out. And this is about being patient. It's just about assessing where, what's going on. What Like, just assessing the map here. No need to force things, take things slow. Now notice how Caitlyn and Talia and stuff, they're backing me up. So I'm able to kind of walk top here and catch these waves because we have top river control at the moment. And again, um, if I were to do this earlier, I probably would have died. But now my team is able to back me up and I'm able to... Um, and even just back up guys, just threat because they're out of vision in river is, is just enough a lot of the time because they don't know where they are. But unfortunately, they had scuttle. So now what I want to be doing ideally is coming in from the side, looking for a little pick when I can. And this is the benefit of Umbral Blade. I know none of this is watered. And this is what's so good and why it scales so well into like mid to late. Because you know you can make these creative plays. Now I know that's watered, so I have to go. And um, I, I felt like here, this was awkward. Like I wanted to, I didn't know if he had flash. I thought I just had to flash EQ. But he stayed too far from, I don't know if I could have altered him or not. I'm not 100% I'm not sure. I decided not to. I didn't think I needed to because Tali was here. I didn't want to kind of waste my ultimate. So we end up having to kind of chase him a little bit. And then we end up getting the kill. But we end up taking a lot of damage here. Um, and then we TP. We're able to get a nice little bit of a da bit of damage here. And we actually end up killing Diana as well. Um, and then we actually try to Baron here. So... Notice how, like, this is all stuff you can implement in your own games, guys. If you're not stronger than the person in the side lane, and say your team's, like, more behind and you're playing uh, Kiana, you'll just have to group more, be more creative with your side lane plays and try and group for a pick or be creative with your jungler to make a pick in the side lane. Um, I will try and force, yeah, like, force vi force priority, force pressure when, um, when you're with your team. And now, again, I just want to <clears throat> use my Humble Blade to clear vision. I'm going to stop the VOD soon because this is where the game gets quite messy. But my biggest learning from this game here, um, we we had to realize that we couldn't Baron here. They had Ezreal Karma. They have a lot of poke. We're really low. We can't Baron here. But what I'm going to do is give you a bit of advice around every object. This is Dragon and Baron included. Ideally, what you want to be doing and the benefit of Umble Blade is sitting on the side, clearing vision with your Umble Blade. And then when they walk in, you can either look for a flank from behind like this, like from around like that, or if they're coming in from here, you can actually, you can't actually see, but I'll draw on the mini map. You sit in this side brush here or just off to the side. And when they fully commit into river, then you can look for flanks. You don't ideally want to be sitting in areas like this. And the reason is if you just sit out in the open like this, you're going to get poked. There's no scare factor. Like you're just a very linear champion. You're easy to kite 
um, you're easier to kind of damage from a distance, so it's really difficult for you to kind of get your combo off. So what I recommend, you need to be a ninja, and like, a, like again, lion, to use the same reference as before, like analogy, like a lion in the savannah, you want to be coming from the side, you want to be having that surprise factor to be able to burst on, because when you're here in the open, it's a lot harder to get a really solid ultimate off or a really solid pick. So guys, be creative with where you're positioning. Use your Umbral Blade passive to know that or clear wards in the future if you know you're going to Baron. And if, you know, ideally, if the team was, if I knew the team was coming in from here, I could either come in from here, wait till they're fully committed. I can maybe come in from behind, drawing on the minimap there, come in from behind like that way. Or I could even be up in that bush up in the corner here. Or I could even be up in that side river bush when they fully commit i come in from behind slam them into the wall whatever it doesn't really matter again it's the mindset and you guys need to test this in your own game it's not me playing the game when you guys are playing counter it's you all i'm giving you now is the the, the mindset behind the what like what you need to be looking for and this is the same for dragons this is the same for barons a lot of the time you need that scare factor you need to be using your passive and your humble blade you need to be positioning on the side to get a flank to burst the target that is burstable um, and another note, guys, in terms of another tip for Kiana, last tip is what I'll give you is always use tab to check who has Zonyas, who has GA, who has stacked a lot of armor because armor is such a big counter to lethality. You need to be careful about, um, you know, who you can burst. And again, if you can't burst that champion... Um, it's going to kind of be really pro a big problem for you. So you need to constantly check the itemization. If their stopwatch is going to change how you're going to play fights, it might actually change your target. That's really important. And then also in terms of itemization, guys, um, because they didn't have enough armor yet in this specific part of the game, I, I think I end up going for a third lethality item. Um, that, again, depends. You can, sometimes you can go Ghost Blade. Sometimes you can go like this, the Banshee's Veil item. Um, I don't know. I keep forgetting what it's called. Or if they say they had a lot of armor, I might even go the armor penetration item. I might even go sometimes might you know might go Sterax if they're, they're they're quite like I need a bit more survivability or Sterax. Or I might even just go GA. Any of these items again, it just depends on how you feel in the moment. What do you feel you need? There's no cookie cutter build, but the first two is pretty much fundamental. Those first two lethality items. So guys, um, hopefully this helps. This video helps. I've been playing a lot of Kiana. If you if you need any help on Kiana, just feel free to let me know. Try and implement. I tried to break this down in fundamentals so you guys can apply it to a lot of your games. Um, so let me know how it goes. Cheers. Thanks for watching.